will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court gates with praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to pray, but before we pray, I would like us to sing the chorus which says, Si Abudu Misa. Amen. Si Abudu Misa. Si Abudu Misa. Si Abudu Misa.
of your word will be sown, O oh God. Prepare us. We pray, pray for our pastor. Prepare him, Lord, his vocal cords, his lips, Lord, as he shares that, that word, Father God, from you. And it will have the same creative power that he had when you created in the beginning. You are Alpha, you are Omega, you are the beginning, you are the end. Thank you, Father God. It is working this morning in this place, and we receive Holy Spirit, yes. He was at God's side when He created. He's the one who was hovering over the face of the earth as the maker. Rabba Shataya, Rabba Rabba Shataya. Welcome, welcome, Holy Spirit. Move amongst us this morning. We give you the agenda of this meeting this morning. It's not about us. Yeah. 
He has given us all things pertaining to life and unto godliness. We are so, so blessed. Amen. Hallelujah.
church, they may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Anything can happen. Hallelujah. That is in the presence of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to call upon Sister Jeshwin to do the work for offering for us this morning. Amen. Amen. Let us be then those signs will follow your finances. The wisdom of the world tells us there is inflation and recession and that you cannot overcome it. If you are convinced of this, you will never have enough and signs will follow you what you believe. Uh, number two, God will rebuke the devourer. In Malachi chapter three, we read a very familiar uh, scripture. God says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be, be, may, may be meet in my house. And prove me now, hear what say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Now notice here that God says he will rebuke the devourer. In the New Testament, we are instructed to resist the devil. We are instructed to fight the good fight of faith. We are instructed to bind our adversary. But here in Malachi, God says that he will rebuke the devourer for us. The word rebuke means to address sharply, reprimand or force back. When you rebuke the devil, you notice a boldness that will come upon you. When you are fed up with the devil and finally get mad at him and rebuke him, then you become a different person. When you are fed up and mad enough to rebuke the devil, he will leave you alone. God's fed up with the devil controlling your finances. He's tired of hearing his children say, I'd love to give more, but I can't. He's tired of ministers not being able to build their churches. He's fed up and he's going to rebuke our adversary. It will take enormous amounts of money for us to do in the earth what needs to be done before Jesus returns. God said to me, I'm going to command my blessing upon my people, for it is they who will finance the greatest revival that has ever come upon this planet. I will do a work in their finances and I will cause them to prosper for the gospel's sake. Number three, the devourer shall be stopped. God is going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. The word devourer means to swallow up, to consume. That is exactly what has been happening to our finances. Have you ever had, ever had that all your salary was spent before you even get to the bank? If so, then it was consumed. Have you ever had your money just seem to disappear? And you wonder what happened to it all? It was swallowed up. God said, I will rebuke the one who is swallowing up your money. I will address him sharply. When the creator of the universe speaks, the Bible says his voice is like thunder. The Bible speaks of the voice of Jesus in the book of Revelation. And it says, it's, it was the sound of many waters. God's voice is a powerful voice and his words carry tremendous power. It is a frightening sound to our adversary. God is going to speak to your finances. In the spirit realm, there will be a thundering voice heard, and Satan and his forces will rock and reel under the blow of God's voice. Number four, get out of bondage now. God needs for us to get out of financial bondage now. Jesus is coming soon. There is much work yet to be done, but we can do it. Satan cannot stop the preaching of the gospel. He will try to by keeping the body of Christ in financial bondage. But God is not going to allow it, if we will obey his voice. If you will determine in your heart to be set free, then God will move supernaturally on your finances and deliver you. Prosperity belongs to you, number five. God wants his people to prosper. It is not his intention, however, for, the, for this wealth to be spent on our own lusts to gratify our flesh. 
This is to finance the revival that is coming on this planet. There is a structure that is being made to be fulfilled on our behalf. It says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Proverbs 13.22 The Amplified Bible says that it will eventually find its way into our hands. Number six, your attitude is important. The way we sow in famine is also important to God. Let's look the way, at the way the people were instructed to bring an offering in Exodus 35 verse 4. And Moses spoke, all, spoke unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of the Lord. In verse 10 it says, And every wise-hearted among you shall come. Wise-hearted people are people who obey God. In verse 21 it says, And they came, every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted. And they brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. Notice their attitude, they were willing to obey God. They were being obedient to the word of the prophet. These people were so willing to obey God that they gave more than enough. They weren't selfish but gracious and God was well pleased with them. If you are obedient to God and so in famine, He will speak to your finances with just as much power as when He said it liked be. He's going to say prosperity come. Satan cannot stop the return from coming into your hands if you are obedient to God's word. In Deuteronomy 28, God commands blessings upon those who obey him. Victory will come. God is rebuking the devourer and commanding the blessing of Isaac upon all who are obedient to sow in famine. Sow your seed now and keep on sowing and watch God move supernaturally in your behalf. Amen. Amen. We stand as we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray over the church and over your people this morning, Father. I rebuke this financial famine that's over your people, Father. I praise you and thank you, Father God. If God, in your word, you say that if my people are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. Father, I also pray, Lord, and I thank you, Father, that every seed that your children sow, Lord, you never forget to see. I pray a financial an overflow over them, Father God, that it will overtake them, as your word says, my God. I praise you and I thank you, Father, for your children, and I pray, God, that they will never experience a financial famine. I pray for those that are out without jobs, Father. I pray, God, that you are a God of the supernatural and you will provide for them. I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
we have a living hope in Christ Jesus, your Son. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for being mindful of us. Thank you for visiting us, O oh Lord. For taking on the likeness of flesh. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for every stripe that was endured upon that cross for us. By the stripes of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we were healed. Lord God, we thank you that when Jesus said it is finished, indeed it is finished. So we grab a hold of the promises of God this morning. The very promises of God you gave unto Abraham have become ours, O Lord, because we are the seed of Christ. Your word says if we are Christ's seed, then we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the same promise. So we thank you this morning. Thank you for everlasting life. Thank you for the everlasting covenant which has been ratified in the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you that this morning, Lord, your word will come forth, O oh Lord, with clarity and soundness. I thank you that understanding and enlightenment will come. Even as understanding comes, O oh Lord God, that you'll give us, O oh Lord, a heart of faith. And we'll be full of faith, O oh Lord, and by faith we'll overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your word declares that the just shall live by faith. So we thank you this morning for faith. Thank you that as your word is coming forth this morning, faith is coming in Jesus' wonderful name. We thank you, Lord, and I pray you bless this entire assembly, bless those that are joining us via whatever social platform or media. I pray in the name of Jesus that your blessing, your favor, shall now rest upon your people. In Jesus' blessed name, and the people of God said, Amen, 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 Amen. Come on, give a little praise. Hallelujah. Awesome, God. The mighty and the wonderful God. Yes, amen. amen. Yes. We serve a mighty and a wonderful God. Yes, Lord. Thank God for testimonies. Amen. 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 Now this morning before I go into the word of God, um, Sister Nomsa would like to share a testimony. Amen. I'd like to encourage her as she comes as curtain to hear the mighty Sister Nomsa as she shares her testimony. Come on, give it up. Actually, it started on the 8th of May, the 8th, it was on a Saturday, when it was declared. Some people, I think they know that the Saturday, the 8th of May, was declared as the, the, the day of ancestral worship. Oh. Then, what I did on that day, because I know around my neighbors, around the area that I'm living in, that is, they worship the ancestors. So then I told myself that no, this cannot happen under my watch. I woke up at 6 a.m. Then I walk around the streets praying. When I came back, it was around after seven. Then I said, what's well, it was one and a half hours that I died. But I, I wasn't even tired. It was on the eighth Saturday. Then on the ninth day I came to church. I didn't realize that I'm leaving the people at home sick. <laughs> I thought they are not going to church. <laughs> so when I came back, Notanta is sick. But I never realized that maybe it's that thing of yesterday. I, I thought, no, it's just the stomach because he had a chair, the running stomach. It was on a Sunday. It, then on Monday morning, when I woke up, Unati is sick also. Then he went to a doctor, then came back. Not that I didn't go to the doctor, it's just sick, still lying sick. On Tuesday, I woke up sick, but I said, no, I'm going to wake. At work, they said, no, 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 we can see that you're sick. Please go home. And on the following day, I was supposed to have a meeting with the stakeholders, the external stakeholders, and I couldn't like, uh, postpone the meeting because it was just 
has a short notice, then I said, on Wednesday, no, I'm, I'm going to go in and hold the meeting. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I'll come back. I was very sick on Wednesday, that Wednesday on the 12th of May. Then I went to work, then I hold the meeting. By the grace of God, then I came back. Then I started to ask myself, why everyone now is sick? Um, not that I'm sick, not that I'm sick, I'm also sick. Then I was reminded that, no, you, you, I, I don't know how the, the English went, but Ukale, the spirit provoke, yes, I provoke them. So this is not just sickness, it's just a spiritual, it's a spiritual thing. You know that, you know that uh, the spiritual world is more real than what we see. Because whatever, whatever that we see starts from the spiritual world before it can manifest in the natural. It's Wednesday then. Then on Thursday, Lucifer's school fold. She's sick. I went to fetch her. Then I told her not to go to school on Friday. But she left school. She went on Friday. I got another call and they said, no, she's, she's worse than yesterday. So with no sleep, when she's sick, we cannot like resist. We need to take her dive straight to the hospital because he has, he, she has an underlying disease. Then on Friday, when I, I fetched her, I said that no, she's really not okay. Then we went straight to the hospital. She was admitted in ICU. When she was admitted, uh, Pastor Sharon will, will know. I just asked that whether does she have ketones. They said yes. I didn't bother to ask, and I thank God that I didn't ask because maybe I would panic. I didn't ask how many ketones because you, you, the body of a human being mustn't have even one ketone. But I didn't ask. On the, it was on a Friday. Then when I went back on Saturday to see her, then they gave me the report that they said, no, the ketones are 15. Then I said, how many were they then? If they, they are now 15, they said they were 50. No. Then I said, no. That I, I just thank God that no, if, just imagine overnight, it was 50 to, them, to 15. It's just a huge difference. A, a, a difference. Then uh, it went on then, they were up to zero then, then she was discharged after a week. When the super came back, her mom in week back now, felt sick. Then I said, Daddy, this is not on now. Lord, I've prayed. Now I'm not going to pray, i just worship. I started to worship. Thinking of the Israelites when they were going through the wilderness, the snakes were biting them, then God commanded Moses to make a, 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 a Snake, a, a snake. Then when, when they looked at the snake, all the snakes they just fell off. Oh, yeah. And the word says, as this, that uh, the, the people of this, I mean Moses raised that snake. Can't you know that? We need to raise, I mean to look upon Jesus yes. as our healer. So I started now and I said, no, I'm just worship. I will look away from all these distractions now. And I said, well, I mean, not that I still, still she went to a doctor, she, went, she got worse, she, 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 she was sick for almost seven days, then she recovered. Then now, the people that are sick now, it's not that I, 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 I was, I, I, I recovered and not that she recovered, then no uh, sicko was discharged. So the person that was left, it was feeling, oh, no, 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 not that she uh, recovered, then feeling uh, was, was getting more sick. Then the following week, it was two weeks now, yeah, it's two weeks. The following, the, 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 the second week after the, the eighth of May, uh, Figile recovered. When Figile recovered, was in North London, started again. Then I said, no. And when North London started, then I was like looking, saying that now this thing is starting to form a pattern. Let me check, yeah. Then after that, it was me again the second time. Then I said, no, no, I'm not taking this. This time I'm going to work. Whether I'm scared, I want you to say it's at work. So I went to work, although I was sick, but I said, no, I won't sleep this time. I'm, I'm going to work. Then I recovered, not that like I recovered, feeding it again for the second time. Then I said, no, we just continue to worship and taking the, the, the communion. What I'm trying to say, then God, all God's healed. 
now it's my brother. But I, I, I'm not worth it. Because it's the same sickness, and if you see, if you check, it's not like what I was like, like debating in my heart. Like I was saying, if we were living in one, uh, one house, all of us, and the sister in bed, and also my brother, I would say there's something that we ate. But now that we are living far in different places, but we are having one and the same sickness. So this thing is spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I need, we need to deal it spiritual. And what I've realized, the more you look and you rest in Christ, everything just fails. Yeah. So, but ever, the devils are being sharpened to us. The word says, no people form against us shall be prosper. That means there are weapons that are formed against yes, us. Yes. But what we must know that it won't prosper. And the word also says, when the enemy comes like a flood, oh, God. With, with, with the word, it's, it's different with, with the version. Some versions, they say, when the enemy comes like a fire, flood, then there's a calm. The spirit of the Lord raises up against the Lord, like, like, raises up the standard against it. With other translations, it says, when the enemy comes, then, comma, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises up the standard. No matter whether it's the enemy that is coming like a flood or what, at the end, the spirit of the Lord raises up the standard. So we need to stand on the way. We need to stand. Nothing, nothing can harm us. The word says so. That nothing, nothing. Shall live by faith. You are the just. 
and because you are the just, he says to you, now you shall live by faith. Hallelujah. He says, now you shall live by faith. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the more you hear God's word, the more faith is coming to you. Say amen to that somebody. Hallelujah. He says, now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Jesus said, if you would believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So you live by faith. Remember when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he said to them, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Now we go on to verse, chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is faith? Faith is substance. It's substance. It is, it is a foundation. It is a setting of the things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of unseen realities. You see, I want to share with you this morning. It's a very brief word that I've prepared this morning. And while I was speaking to the Lord, the Lord, you know, said to me, tell my people to live now. You see, if you say, I believe that God will come through for me. You know what you say? Well, you say, I believe that uh, God will heal me. Healing brothers and sisters in Christ is not a promise. Healing is not a promise. I want to show that to you in the book of Peter, 1 Peter. Let's go there. Tell your neighbor, healing is not a promise. It's not a promise. It's a statement of truth, of something that has happened already. God doesn't say, I'm going to heal you. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, Who himself, speaking of Jesus, who himself bore our sins, in his own body on the tree that we having died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed he doesn't say by whose stripes you're going to get healed do you see that he doesn't say by whose stripes you will be healed, or you may be healed. The Bible says you were healed. It's a statement of truth. It is fact. It is real. It is a reality. And through hearing the Word of God and spending time in the Word of God, all that God has already done becomes a reality to us. You see, when you're reading the Word of God, you're hearing the Word of God, you're meditating on the Word of God, you're studying the Word of God, the more you get in God's word, what happens is the image that you see within you, in your spirit, it begins to change. You start seeing yourself out of your, your present circumstances. Amen. Like if someone were to ask you, how come you're going through this, but how come you are full of joy, you are expectant. You see, hope is expectancy. Hope is what expects. You expect something to happen. But you don't expect it now. You delay it. There's a testimony that a man of God shared. And he was praying for people in a crusade. And he got to the, to the one gentleman. 
and you know he was praying for the infilling of the Holy Spirit and he asked this gentleman, an 83 year old man, he asked him, he said, do you believe that when I lay my hands upon you that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit? The man says, I hope so. The man of God said, do me a favor, please go sit down because it's not going to happen now. And the man got offended and he said, no, I'll show you what I mean. And the man of God started ministering and he ministered and he came to a woman and he asked the woman the same question. Because he told that man when he sat down, he said, I'm going to show you, I want you to pay attention and see what happens. And he came to this woman. And he asked her the same question he asked the elder, the, the elderly gentleman. And the woman said, yes, I believe. Before the man of God could even lay hands upon her, the Holy Spirit came upon her. She lifted up her hands and started praying in tongues. And then he looked to the old man and he says, now do you see what I'm talking about? This woman said, yes, I believe. You said you hope. Hope postpones it. Hope puts it in the future. But faith, the Bible says, now faith is. Faith is now. When we read the book of Joel, Joel chapter number 3, let's just go there quickly. The book of Joel, J-O-E-L. Joel chapter number 3, and I want to read verse 10. He says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. What does it say now? Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. When Jesus, when, when, when you sat in the service before your conversion, before you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you sat in the service and you heard the Word of God being ministered. You, you were sitting and you hearing the gospel being preached. And what happened was, you got an image from the words that were being preached. You saw yourself in that glorious state. You saw yourself as a likely candidate to receive that mercy which Christ came to give. You saw yourself as a likely candidate. And when the altar call was presented and you responded and you received Jesus at that point, you became saved. At that point, you became a new creation. It was not something, listen, the Bible doesn't say hope will save you. The Bible doesn't say hope will make you well. Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee well. You see, hope postpones it. Hope sets it in the future. That's why you find some people, they can sit under the influence of the word of God being preached. And when the invitation to respond to the altar call comes, you find people say, I'm not yet ready. I'm not yet ready. But they can see themselves stepping their wine. They are hoping for that. That is hope. Delayed faith is not faith. Delayed faith is hope. Because you are hopeful, you, are, you, you believe that it will happen, but it will not happen now, it will happen next year, next, come and talk to me. But faith, faith takes it as now. As we read in the book of Joel, he says, let the weak say, I am strong. So at the point that the weak says he's strong, he becomes strong. Your confession is what changes it around for you. Come and talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. When Jesus ministered to the sick, as Jesus walked, everywhere he walked, he ministered to the sick. Those people that came to Jesus, the woman with the issue of blood, 
the paralytic who has been carried by his four friends. Those who were being brought to Jesus came in hope. They came in the hope. They, they were expecting something to happen. And when Jesus said, when he said to the man, rise up and walk, that was a command. Jesus gave him a word. The man came with expectancy. And when Jesus said, rise up and walk, he had seen himself already before he got the rising up. That when Jesus said, rise up and walk, he didn't still question and say, as then come to my bones, can I feel my muscles? Have I got feeling in my legs? The man responded to the word. You see, when the word comes, faith comes. And faith happens in the now. Faith takes hope. It takes hope. And it translates it into the present. It brings what you're hoping for in 10 years time to manifestation now. I trust you getting what I'm saying. Faith is now. Now faith is the substance. Faith is the foundation. The minute you respond in faith, you're laying a foundation that says, I don't care what I hear, what I see, I know what God has said, and based upon what God has said, I declare it has happened. That's what faith is. Faith says it has happened already, not it's going to happen. If you're living under it's going to happen, you are living in hope, not in faith. It's good to have hope. Romans 5 tells us that hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Every time you read the Word of God, you see how much God loves you and the Holy Spirit begins to work in you and you begin to see things in a different light, through a different lens. But then you get to the point where you've got to translate your hope into faith. It's like somebody wanting to start, um, let's say, a business. And the person is hopeful and expecting that, you know, I, I will open a business one day. I will have my own business one day. You are having hope. That is hope. But unless you get to the point where you say, I'm going to start somewhere today. Amen. And I'm going to bring it to pass today. Amen. You're always going to live in the hope that it will happen and you find it will never happen because you keep delaying it. But when faith comes, when you translate it to faith, that which you hope for is manifest in the natural. Faith is a supernatural force. It is a gift that God has given unto us. Talk to somebody. God has given you the gift of faith. The book of Romans tells us God has given to each one of us a measure of faith. So if God has given you a measure of faith, that means you have faith. Amen. And why did God give you? That the fact that God gave you faith, it is a gift that God is giving you. Amen. That's why, you know, don't ever get to the point where you neglect the study and the meditation and the reading and the hearing of the Word of God. Because when you're hearing the Word of God, faith is coming. This gift, come on, it is a gift. Faith is a gift. Amen. God has given to each one of us a measure of faith. So the fact that, let me ask you a question, how much did you pay for your faith? How much did you pay for it? It is free, freely given. What do you receive freely? A gift is received freely. You don't earn it. It gets given to you. And God has given you a measure of faith. Why? Because faith is what allows you to transact with the kingdom of God. Mm, you're not hearing me. Let's, let's just look at Abraham quickly. Go to Romans 4. Romans 4. 
Hallelujah. Romans 4. Romans chapter 4. While we're going there, I want to read verse 2 of Hebrews 11. It says, For by faith the elders obtained a good testimony. We just heard Sister Nomsa's testimony this morning. We've heard many testimonies of what God has done. What gave the good report? It was faith. That's why Jesus says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Paul says, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself up for me. I live by this. Listen, I've received the gift of faith. I've received the measure of faith. I've received it. But ultimately, it still belongs to him. Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, we, we, we can liken it so much to when we talk about everything belongs to God, the salary you have belongs to God, the house you have belongs to You know, people say that it all belongs to God. And yet, it's God's gift. And in the very same way, God gave you faith, His faith. You see, faith is, man, that is powerful. That is powerful. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God, it means God is giving you himself. God, listen, Jesus is the word. So you're receiving Jesus. Every time you're receiving the word, you're receiving Jesus. You're receiving his strength. Come on, talk to me. You're receiving his strength. You're receiving his ability. Why? Because now when you read this, the scriptures, you see who you've become in Jesus. And God has preordained and predestined that all mankind should be transformed into the image of his son Jesus. Talk to me. That you start seeing yourself Operating in his power, operating in his strength. That you begin to do what Jesus did. You begin to talk as Jesus spoke. Talk to me, somebody. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. you. You know, you can rise up and you can speak to the storms because Jesus did that. And you can speak back at the storms. You can command the winds to cease. Talk to me, somebody. When there's chaos, you can command peace. When there's weakness, you can command strength. When there's sickness, you can command health. When there's lack, you can command abundance. Talk to me, somebody. The rivers of living waters that begin to flow. It's because of the word of God on the inside of you. Listen, the word we've received, this is a living word. This word, once this word begins to live inside of you, you'll find that your faith comes alive. Romans 4, from uh, Jesus. Let's go from verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed. Hallelujah. I want you to highlight this. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Can you see the nature of God? You see the nature of God? He gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who, contrary to hope, you see Abraham, contrary to hope, against hope, in hope he believed, 
so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. Something was spoken to Abraham. What was spoken? A word was spoken. And when the word came, Abraham believed that word. And what was the word? So shall your descendants be. And not watch it, not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, Abraham was a hundred years old. He didn't consider and say, oh, I'm so old now. You some folk, you speak to them now, you say, oh, I'm so old, it's too late. Who told you it's too late? Who told you you're old? Who told you? Oh, no, you can see the wrinkles, you can see my hair's gone gray, oh yeah? It doesn't mean you're old. The Bible says, though your outer man perish, your inner man is renewed daily. Consider what Caleb said, come and talk to me. He was still youthful in his prime. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, he did not waver at the promise of God to unbelief, but was strengthened in faith giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Abraham, he didn't allow any unbelief to come in. Abraham believed that what God said, he'd bring it to pass. And how did Abraham demonstrate it? He demonstrated it by giving glory to God. You see? So you can learn from Abraham. You receive the word, the instruction of the word. When the word comes, the word instructs you to do something. Listen, this thing about this, this life that we live, where God says the just shall live by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. When you hear the word, the word brings instruction. The word brings correction. The word brings direction. The word tells you what you are to do. And you do what the word says you must do. When you start, that is, that is wonderful. Because now you begin to, oh Jesus. You begin to act out, live out the word that is within you. But you can't, listen, you can't give someone something you don't have. You can't give the world something you don't have. You've got to have the word in you. When the word is in you, now you start practicing the word. Practicing the word, that is faith. But holding on to the word and saying, it's going to, you know, it's going to, things are going to turn, turn out for the good. Things are going to become better. You're living in hope. But you've got, you got to get to a point where you say, now, nah, I'm going to step out of the boat. I'm going to walk on the water. I'm going to start doing things now. Come and talk to me. Listen, faith, faith acts. Faith is action. That's what faith is. It's action. It's the word that's within you that you, as you demonstrate it, as you act it out, as you live it out, that word now becomes a part of your life. You see how the word works in your life. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, yes, we are, you know, human nature, we go through things and sometimes, you know, you can get tired and, you know, you can go through stuff, things can happen in your day. But you should not allow that to overwhelm you. When you feel like that, close your eyes and you just call on the Lord. He is your strength. He is your healer. Come and talk to me. He is your healer. Thank you, Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. Listen, the more you proclaim it, the more you speak it, you're giving voice to the scriptures. And as you speak, as Sister J.C. was sharing in the offering this morning, when the Lord speaks, it, it has the sound of many waters. It's like thunder. So when you speak the word of God, it's, it's like God speaking through you. And when God speaks, no demon, no devil can stop it. Because when you send forth that word, that word will come to pass. It will come to manifestation. Faith is what brings the 
word to full manifestation. Faith is what brings the word to fruition. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus healed the sick and he said, rise up and walk, and he said, your faith has made you whole, your faith has made you well. It was at that, you see, at that point, that person stepped out of hope and stepped into faith. All of a sudden, hope became faith. And once faith was there, things could happen. Remember when the apostles were busy preaching in the book of Acts, there was a young girl there and the apostles saw that she had faith to be healed. You see, there were many sitting there listening to the same message. But there was a young girl there and the apostle set his eyes upon her and he saw that she had faith to be healed and he spoke to her and he said, Jesus of Nazareth makes you well, makes you whole. And she, she was healed. Amen. You see that? Faith is what gets it done in the natural. That's why you don't let go of your faith. Hallelujah. The world cannot see it. But you can see it. You know it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If it's healing, you see yourself. You're hopeful for your healing. And faith is the substance that brings out, it brings it forth. If you're in lack, you're hopeful that God will provide, God will supply. But faith is what brings it forth. That's why when you sow, you are, listen, listen, you know people really, mm, mm. in sowing and reaping, you know how much power there is, you know how, oh, it's for your benefit. It's for your benefit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when we were buying a house. The first time we applied, it was declined. And we said, no, we're going to try again. And we sowed a seed. You see, the world gave us a voice to say, no, you cannot have it. And we said, no, we're going to respond now. God said, I will give you houses you didn't build. That's in the word of God. We went for the scriptures and we took the scripture. And we said, no, we're going to sow a seed in faith. Pastor Sharon and I, we got together. We, come on, we purposed in our hearts. We're going to sow our way into this thing. And the seed spoke against what the enemy had said. The Sunday, we sowed the seed. The Monday, went back to the bank. And guess what? It was approved. Amen. What changed it? It was faith. Faith was the transaction. Faith is what said, you said I can't have it, but God says I can, and this is... You respond in faith. You act in faith. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You don't listen to what the world is telling you. I mean, when I said in my heart I want to study, and I mean, I wasn't even permanently employed for a long time. I think it was my first month. And I said, I want to try and study. I want to apply for a study loan at work. And there were those who said, ah, oh, I don't think you're qualified because you're not here long enough. But nevertheless, I applied. We prayed about it. One week later, you know, one week later, there was still nothing. And I phoned the place that I was registering at and I said, I'm sorry, I can't register because I don't have the money yet. And they said to me, Mr. Flynn, what are you talking about? The deposit was made just this morning. <laughs> huh? Man, this is, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Is that you don't go by what the world says, you go by what the word of God says. If God said it, that settles it. You gotta to get to a point where you become listen, stubborn with your faith. You're not gonna to listen to what the devil has to say. You're not gonna to listen to the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the lawyer said. I don't care what the government said. I don't care what who said. All I know is if God said it, that settles it. If God has said it, that settles it. 
then hoping that nothing bad is going to happen. You see, when you hope nothing bad is going to happen, because you are expecting something bad to happen, but you're hoping it doesn't happen, it's actually negative. It's contrary. And I became born again. Then God opened my eyes. And I got to the point where I said, if he threw his toys out in that store yesterday, he's not doing it in my store. If that person had this favor with the boss, it means I don't have this favor, I have favor. God gives me favor. Are you giving me somebody? And I began to find it every time. Now what happened was the regional started liking my brown so much, he started camping there more. I remember one day the regional manager, he was coming to visit. And he was only, you know, normally they just come to your store and they go home, or they sleep over in the hotel and then come back the next day, or we'll go to another store. I'm still going home. I'm locking the store. And the regional says, where do you stay? I want to see where you stay. The, the regional followed me home to my house. Kurt was still a small baby then. The regional came, Master Sharon was there, he came here, supper with us. I thought, my God, this is favor. Amen. This is favor. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? That's the life that God has for us. Stop comparing yourself to the rest of the world. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You know, when you can begin to see who God truly has made you, that God has given you His Word for you to live by. As you live this Word, you'll see how real God becomes to you. You'll see how God will turn things around for you. Because it's faith. I tell you, you know, the companies retrenching people, they're getting rid of people. God said He will provide. God said He will look after me. Amen. You all say Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. Amen. How about saying the Lord is my employer? I shall not be unemployed. Amen. The Lord is my banker. I shall not be poor. Amen. The Lord is my guide. I shall not be confused. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are born to be different. He says the just shall live by faith. If anyone draws back, my soul takes no pleasure in him. Strong faith, real faith. Let me say real because Real is what faith is. Faith is real. Faith is a reality. You see, we live in a three-dimensional world, but there's a fourth dimension, which is the realm of faith. And not everybody lives there, except the people of God. We live in the fourth dimension. It is a dimension beyond this three-dimensional world. You can take something from the fourth dimension and bring it to manifestation in the third. Faith is a force. Faith is a spirit. Paul says in Corinthians, we having received the same spirit of faith, speak. Speak what we believe. You believe the word of God, you speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith is now. If you can live by faith, faith is now. That means you can turn around your situation now. You can turn situations around now by faith. When Job says, let the weak say I'm strong, why? Because the minute you confess it, you become it. Amen. I didn't get that. The minute you confess it, you become it. You see, the minute, listen, 
The minute you came, you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became a child of God. You became the righteousness of God. So the minute you confess it, you become it. The minute you confess your healing, you become healed. Whatever you confess, you become that instant. Speak words of faith. Become a person of faith. Begin to operate in faith. Jesus lived his entire life by faith in the Father. He spoke words in faith. He performed miracles in faith. He is the perfect, the most perfect example of a life of faith and obedience to God. There's no better example to follow than the example that Jesus has set for us. You are walking, listen, you are walking in His stead, in His place. I remember as a child, and I've seen Joshua do it once or twice. I'd go, you know, to the bedroom, and I'd see my father's shoes, and I'd put my feet in his shoes. And the shoes were like that, but my feet are here. But you know what? I'm dragging it like that. You know, you can't walk like this because then your feet come out, but you're dragging so that they don't fall off. Jesus has set his footprint on the sand, on this earth. His footprint has been set. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. As you put your foot in his footprint, you put your foot in his footprint. He's the supernatural God, Son of God. He touched the earth, set a footprint for you. As you take your foot and you put it where his foot is, there's a divine exchange. You connect with the divine. It causes the supernatural to burst forth. And as you keep walking in his footsteps, in his word, you find you grow into that foot. I mean, Joshua would put his feet in my shoe and he'd do the same as I used to do. Today, I have to put my feet in his shoe because his shoe, his size is bigger than mine. So he outgrew me. What did Jesus say? Greater works than these will you do because I go to my shoe. Your faith is going to grow. Tell your neighbor, I'm growing. Tell yourself, I'm growing. I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing. As the cedars of Lebanon, I am growing. Glory to God. You've been called for greater works, says the Lord. You've been ordained for greater works, says the Lord. Closing with this. Look at the account of Jesus. When he came into the temple. And he opened, and he began to read. Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. You remember that? When Jesus had finished reading that, he rolled up the scroll. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this day the scripture has been fulfilled. That is the example that Jesus set for us. He said, when you read the word of God, you're reading who you are, who you've become. 
at the point when you close your Bible, you must get to the point where you can say, Verily, verily, the scripture is fulfilled today in my life. You see, because faith came, and as, faith, as I'm reading, faith is coming, hope is coming, I see it with hope, and as I see it, I say, thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. As I, as I say amen, that means so be it, it means it's settled. Today, the scripture is fulfilled in my life. How about you, this morning, going home, looking for a promise in the word of God? There are thousands of promises in this word. Many people are saying, oh, you know, I've got so many things happening in my life. I don't know, listen, let me tell you, there, there is nothing that happens in your life that the word of God cannot fix. Amen. All you need to do is go into the word of God, take the word of God and draw by yourself. Amen. In other words, listen, inject yourself, inject the word of God into your spirit. As you do that, you're injecting power. Hallelujah. Power. You begin to walk in the power of God. The power of His Word. There's such a great power that is being released on the face of this earth in the days that we are living in. There's so much power that is available. When you read the Gospels, the Gospels say the power of God was present to heal them all. You didn't tell you this morning the power of God is available to you. Listen, in your home, you have a Bible. You're sitting here, you have a Bible. In your home, you have a Bible. Don't allow what's happening in your home to dictate that, you know, that is how it is going to be. No, you open the Word. Open the Word in your home. Start reading the Word. Start declaring the Word. Start speaking the Word. If it means that, you know, you say, okay, you know, Pastor, I'm just not good with mem memorizing stuff. Then you just take a piece of paper and you take the Word of God. You write it on a piece of paper. You stick it up on the walls. I don't care. It could be in your lounge. It could be in your passage. It could be in your bathroom. It could be in your bedroom. It could be on your window. I don't care where it is. But you write the Word of God. This is right. I bought, which refused to grow, tried everything, tried the tea bags, tried the eggshells, tried the plant food, tried the fertilizer, tried everything, tried the sun. Kurt was only five years old and he wrote on a piece of paper. So he was watching and he wrote on the paper, God will make this plant grow. And one day I went behind the wall unit and there was this plant growing. And as I took it out, I said, wow, I even forgot about this plant. I saw how it had grown. And I looked and there was a piece of paper next to it. I picked up that paper and I saw it. It was written there, God will make this plant grow. I called Kurt, I said, Kurt, did you write this? He said, yes, Dad. The faith of a little child. He wrote down the word. The plant was growing. See that? Allow the Holy Spirit to inscribe the word of God in the tablets of your heart and begin to speak it. Hallelujah. Come on, hold your Bible like this with me. Say this day. This day. Everything, Everything that this word, that this word says, I have, says I have and says I am and, and says I can do, it's all fulfilled this, this day in my life. In my life. This, word this word is fulfilled. I receive its truth, receive its truth. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. doesn't just 
stop there, you gotta go home, you gotta read it. So as you read it, you can see what's available to you. As you read it, you can see what you can do. As you read it, you can see who you are. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, rise up to your feet. Hallelujah. I'm stepping into my now. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I'm stepping into my now. Faith is now. I'm stepping into the now. Hallelujah. I'm stepping into the now. Come on, somebody. I'm stepping into the now. You see, because God will give you a word, and it's a word. It's a now word. He says, faith is now. He says, the just will live now. He gives you a now word for now faith. Oh, praise God, glory to God. Abra Esindara. Mesh Parakia Sohara Bakia Sakata. Libra Visa Ramanda Brahaskia Staha. Father, we thank you this morning for the gift of faith. Thank you so much, Lord. Things that we cannot do, faith can do. Thank you that faith is what causes us to overcome. Because of your word of God, faith comes. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you give strength to your people. You give them, Lord God, hope and courage. You've given them faith as they begin to operate and live out their faith. Thank you, Lord, oh God, we see the word of God coming to fruition in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Lord, oh God, we give you thanks and we give you praise and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you teach us, you lead us, you guide us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, teaches us all truth. I pray, Lord, that from today, as your people would read and study your word, that revelation will come. I pray in the name of Jesus, revelation. Your people may grow, and they may fully understand the hope of their calling in you, O oh God. Lord, that lay aside every weight, O God, that they will press forth, O Lord, to what lies ahead, that they'll stretch towards the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that your hand will rest mightily on your people, that they shall do great, mighty, and valiant things for your kingdom, for your glory. Lord, O oh God, you dwell not in temples made by hands, but you dwell in the temple that you have made with your own hands. We render ourselves as living sacrifices unto you, O oh God, that through us, O oh God, in us, Lord, the world may come to know Jesus Christ. They, too, may receive him as their personal Lord and Savior. We thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you comfort and strengthen your people. In Jesus, wonderful name. How may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can receive it now. You can receive it now. I love how the Bible says immediately 
they were healed. Immediately, they were healed. Why? It was a now faith. It was a now moment. It was a now moment. Amen. I shared with you a few weeks ago about um, Bartimaeus. He said, now is my time. My time is now. How about you say, my time is now. This is my time. This is my season. Amen. I'm glad it now. Make a hold of it now. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, family. We love you very much. Have a blessed and fabulous week. Amen.